Hey, my name is Lucas, and this is my Getting Things Done build with TickTick -tick in 2025. Before we dive into the build, let's take a look at our settings. Navigate to your avatar and press settings. I'm not going to go through every single setting here, just the ones that are important to mention for this particular build. First off, it's not essential to use any of the additional premium features. You do need TickTick -tick Premium, but these things like the calendar, the matrix, and all these others are not required for this setup. And to keep things clean and minimal, I'm not going to cover them in this video. The smart lists that I show are the inbox, the today and the tomorrow view. And I also show tags and filters, but I hide everything else. Notification settings are personal preference as are date and time and appearance. So I'm not going to go through more settings than this in this video, but I have many others as well as a tick tick course that I'm going to cover in more detail later that does go over all of these. Now, if you have an empty TickTick -tick account, it should look something like this. First, it's important to go over capturing. That's the first stage in getting things done. And that's what you're going to do by just adding things into the inbox like this. Whatever comes up in your mind, you can easily just open the app and enter any idea you have. It can be as raw as you want it to be because processing is a later stage. Here, it's all about just capturing and moving on. There are many other ways to capture and I cover that in detail in my course, as well as various other free videos I have on this YouTube channel. So I'm going to link those all in the pinned comment for you to check out. But the general idea is that this inbox is just for capturing and we move anything we've captured into its right place with the right clarification as needed. Which brings us to actually processing things from the inbox. For this, we're going to need a couple things. The first is a place for those items to end up in. Now in this example setup, I am using lists and I'm using folders to park lists into to organize things. Now, what is a focus area that we're seeing here? This is just a way to group and categorize items by topic. For example, you could have something related to your car. That could be a focus area because it's something you need to manage, you need to maintain for whatever needs to be done. You may want to add it into TickTick -tick as well. The dashboard list is the first list that's part of this focus area. And it already has a couple of example items just to show you how you can use TickTick -tick for GTD. The first section here is standalone actions. What this means is that none of these tasks are part of a multi-step project. A project in GTD is basically an outcome you desire to achieve that requires more than one task in order to get there. So for anything that is a single task and achieves its outcome on its own, that's where these items end up in. What you'll notice here is that I've added tasks and then sorted them by priority which is something you can assign to a task by using the flag. There are four levels, red being the highest and white being the lowest. And you can see I've added these four just to show you how this can help you prioritize things if your lists get pretty full. All of these are next actions as they're called in GCD, which means there's no blocker, whether that's time or another task, preventing them from being started. We'll get over that in just a moment on how these tags and all that structure works. But to achieve a similar look with your lists and prioritize based on these levels, you can navigate to the right top here, then sort by priority. And this will allow higher priority items to end up higher on the list. There's also a not now section. This is also called someday maybe and anything that relates to this focus area that you don't want to do right now, which can be anything. It's okay to park those in here, but it can also be tasks that are very much processed and predefined, but that just aren't available to be performed right now. And here's an example of just that. This is a predefined task with a start date of next week as of recording this video. So what you'll notice here is I'm using the date association, which is often interpreted as a due date. In other words, it's the date when something needs to be done. But actually, you can just use it as a start date as well. The way I distinguish tasks that are available versus ones that aren't is by deploying a next tag for next action. Under tags, before we dive into the other lists and everything else, I want you to add the following tags next to assign to tasks that don't have any blockers waiting for tasks that are not performed by you, but that you want to keep a kind of paper trail of and contexts. We're going to expand these in a moment because there's some additional refinement we want to add to these. But basically what needs to happen here, once Monday arrives, as this description also informs us that by Monday, this task becomes available. So on Monday, we just press plus, we add the next tag, 
and we move it to the standalone actions list because now this is an available action. And that's how you can manage your tasks from a project view, but we're going to find a better way to manage our tasks in a moment. This is just to keep things organized and ensuring that when you want to actually get things done, you'll have it all pre-configured and all you need to do is get going. There's also the reference material section. You can also bundle this with support material, although I just use that specifically for projects. And again, we spoke about the car example. You may want to have a copy of your driver's license here as an image, which is possible to do. And you can have it as a note instead of a task, which means it cannot be accidentally ticked off if you don't want it to be. In order to do this, you right click and you convert to notes, or in this case, it says tasks, so you can go back and forth. Now let's take a look at the two types of projects we can actually have, which are sequential projects and parallel projects. Let's start with parallel projects. The way I interpret a parallel project is this is an outcome that you want to achieve that requires multiple tasks in order to get to it, but those tasks are not dependent on one another. In other words, they can be completed in a random order. All that matters is that at some point, all of the tasks are actually complete. The way I do this is by just grouping everything under the actions section, which I've created here. I call them puzzle pieces in this case, because again, it doesn't matter in which order you lay the puzzle, as long as eventually every piece is put together and you see the full image. All of these are next actions. This is actually an action that needs to be performed by someone else, just to give you an example of what the waiting tag looks like. And this is an example of a task that had a time blocker. But as this description implies, once the associated date hits today, add next. And then there may be a due date even, which can be June 14th. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add this tag and now we're going to change the date to what is now to be interpreted as a due date. So basically next tag plus date equals due date. Date without next tag equals start date. Now that we've done this and we have support material here, it might be a note on the project. And you can notice how TickTick supports formatting quite extensively, which is nice to help us move this to the finish line. This is pretty straightforward, but there's also something arguably more complex, and that's a sequential project. The difference between a parallel and a sequential project is that in a sequential project, tasks need to be performed in a certain order. In other words, they do, in fact, depend on one another. That's why here, the tasks are not called puzzle pieces, but they're called steps. I'm using TickTick's subtasks functionality here in order to get as close to an automatic blocker dependency kind of view as TickTick allows us to. Because unfortunately, TickTick does not allow us to link tasks with one another and automatically make them available, or in other words, next actions, once the blocker is complete. So we're going to have to work around that a little bit here. What I've done is to first create a task. This is the main level, if you will. And then I added various subtasks to it. You can do this by right-clicking and then add subtask here. And you can do this quite a few times, as you can see. And that's exactly what I've done. So in this case, we have a sequential project that includes a five-step sequence of tasks. Now, it's important to read this from bottom to top, because if you were to start with step one here and add all the others below, which might seem more intuitive if you read from left to right or from top to bottom, usually, what you'll see happening is that all the steps below also get completed because this is interpreted as a parent task. We're working around this by reading it upside down. Step one is the first action here. So that has the next tag only once the step is complete. Step two becomes available. Let's pretend that's the case. Now you'll notice that step two is next in line. You'll also notice that it's actually a waiting for task. So in this case, someone else needs to perform it for us. But now let's assume that is the case. And here we have an interesting scenario where step number three is actually next up. It's to be performed by us, but it has no next tag. However, because we can see the steps one and two are complete, this tells us we can now add this tag. And now this is the new available task. For step four, we're noticing something interesting because here again, we see, if you remember the rule, no next tag, but a date. So in fact, even if this task was to become available by having no other blockers left, the date indicates it's only available starting next week. So this one has both a blocker in terms of a task as well as a time blocker. Even if step three is now completed, we cannot yet add the next tag to step four because we need to wait until this date arrives. So you'll notice how this allows you to really emulate a blocker dependency type of relationship inside of TickTick. 
you can add multiple of these sequences in one go to one single project list, as you can see. In fact, you can also combine the two. This is just a separate next action that belongs to this project. Ticking this one off does not influence any of this. It is part of completing the project, but it's not part of the sequence. Now let's take a look at tags in a bit more detail. We've obviously studied them already. We know what the next tag and what the waiting tag is for. What you'll also notice though, is that we have various blue colored tags here. This is what I use for contexts. And in GTD, the best way I can summarize this is that a context is a condition that needs to be met in order for you to be able to actually complete a task. These are categorized usually by people, places, and tools. So I need to be with this person. I need to be at this location, or I need to use this machine. A lot of people use things like home as a place, office, computer, phone, and this is super personal. So what you'll need to do here is add these sub tags under the context menu, just to keep things clean. Make sure you color them in a way that works for you. I always use blue to keep it recognizable and rename them, edit them to whatever your contexts are. This is extremely personal, so I cannot fill this in for you. But you'll notice also throughout this whole video, probably, this is very much a template. You can actually download this template from my website and import it. All you need to do is edit it. Or of course, you can just rebuild it and using this video as a walkthrough. It will take you some more time. So basically, it's up to you to ask yourself, okay, am I going to make a small investment into a template like this and save time? Or am I going to start from scratch here? That's very much up to you. Either way, all of this will be visible and you will need to do some editing to make it work for you. Now, before we dive into the day-to-day -day use of this system, let's take a look first at the GTD dashboard, which is basically what I use to kind of maintain my system, if you will. You'll notice it's quite simple, but obviously you'll want to modify this to your needs. First off, we have routines. They are check a clear time-blocked tasks, which I'll get to in a moment. We have the weekly review. We have the monthly review and the annual review. The weekly review, if you've read the GTD book, is one of the most important rituals that is part of GTD. It consists of various things like clearing your inboxes, making sure all your projects and tasks are up to date, and doing some cleanup. What that looks like is very much up to you, but I have created a template here that is part of this whole setup that you can use and reuse anytime you add a new task. So whenever a weekly review is due, for example, you can just go to any task input menu in TickTick, press the down arrow, add from templates, and then you can modify this, for example, by adding a date and just checking things off as you go without having to recreate it every time. It's really up to you what other rituals you do and when you do them, whenever you want to really, you can set this up in the very intuitive setting here under calendar. So if I move this down to 20 and I have the weekly repetition set up, it's going to move right along with that on the calendar as well. I have more videos on how this all works on my channel. The one higher level item that I also add here that you may want to do as well is tracking your goals. TickTick has a rudimentary but still usable way to do this. It's very much a task. And in this example, it's a long-term goal that's 30% complete. TickTick has kind of a hidden menu here below this section that when you hover over it and click it, it allows you to measure the progress. You can also use the checklist feature, which is separate from a subtask to add certain milestones. And it's up to you how you manage this, whether you want to link to it like I have here or whether you just want to name it and check it off. But this is something that I check in with during the weekly review as well to make sure I know how I'm tracking to my goals. Now let's take a look at maybe the most important parts of this whole build, the part where it all comes together and where we take a look at using this on the day-to-day -day basis when you actually do the work. And the thing that makes this all possible is filters. You want to make sure you make your next actions as accessible as possible, because in the end, all it needs to do for you is inform you of what needs to be done, what you can do right now in order to achieve your goals, meet your commitments to do what needs to be done. Filters are a super interesting feature because, and I'm going to just hit edit here, you can also create new ones from this menu. They allow you to combine all kinds of elements that TickTick has. And the filter that we're going to use here is actually a tag combination filter. Under edit filter, you can first name it, or in this case, rename it if you're using the template, by combining the next tag with a particular context. As you've seen in the list that we have, that's exactly what we're doing with every task. So whenever you're processing a task, think about is this a next action as well as what is the context, the condition that needs to be met in order to complete it. Not only can we create a filter like this, we can also pin them by right clicking and hitting pin, or if you're unpinning them, that would be the same, but I've already pinned it here. And this is where it gets really cool. Take a look what happens when I press this pinned filter. You'll notice that it shows me all of the next actions that require this context. They're even sorted by priority and segmented by project. This is a complete overview of next actions that I can now choose from knowing exactly what they belong to so that in the moment, 
I can make an informed decision on what needs to happen. You can see how it looks different whenever I hover between these different filters because they are tied to different context tags. You can also use filters for this combination here. I personally choose not to. So with the waiting tag, I add contact tags below because that's mostly how I use contact tags. You can also obviously interpret this as a context, in which case it would become blue. But in my personal experience, I'm usually just waiting for people to do something or organizations. This can also be names of companies like a package delivery, etc. Clicking this allows me to see at a glance what are various entities in my life still being held accountable to for me. What am I waiting for? Is there maybe also a due date for their task? And if so, I can remind them, which really helps with keeping others accountable. This is also why I have the today list because it shows tasks, whether they're next actions, rituals like this, whether it's items that have a start date that needs to be filled or obviously a due date that needs to be met. And the tomorrow list is helpful just at the end of the day to make sure I can see what might come up tomorrow and I can kind of pre-plan my day. Finally, let's take a quick look at the check clear time blocked tasks task that we have here. This is an interesting filter that I use every day just to maintain the sequential project logic. As we've gone over in this video, there will be tasks that have time as a blocker. The way to show these is precisely as follows. You'll want to create a filter under advanced. The first thing you want to do is exclude the following tags next and anything related to waiting. Next up under and and after this, you want to make sure they're due today. And lastly, you want to make sure they do have tags because there are also tasks that might be, you know, assigned to dates like rituals, but those aren't actually time blocks. So using this combination exactly allows us to get an overview of all the tasks like this one that have a time blocker. Now, in this interesting example, it's one that's also blocked by other tasks as this uncompleted sequence shows. So this we don't need to do anything with, but in the case that this was all complete, which we're also able to see, we would now want to add the next tag to it to make sure we always have an overview of tasks that we can now perform. So let's add it and you'll notice it immediately escapes this view and it's now available. This filter is part of a daily ritual task that is reminded here. So now I can mark complete. There we go. We have an up-to-date system and it just takes really a couple of minutes to get on top of everything if you are consistent, if you maintain it daily. There's lots more to cover. In fact, on my YouTube channels, you'll find lots of other TikTok -tick videos where I dive into detail on various features that may be of use to you when you set up and customize your own build. I also have an advanced TikTok -tick course, which I'm even in the progress of redoing. You can sign up for it now. It's still 95% usable. It was created three years ago on an older TikTok -tick version, but I'm updating it. So if you sign up now, once it's updated, you'll also get access to it and leave a link to that in the description. Finally, if you want to use this as a template and edit it, so you have a head start, basically, what you'll need to do is actually log in to your TikTok account on the web version. You need to go to your browser to enter TikTok.com, log in, and here and only here, once you hit settings, what you can do is find the backup and restore option. From here, you can select import backups, select the file that you've downloaded from my website and hit upload. And that's it. Upon refreshing, it'll be ready to use from the web app, from your phone, from your desktop app, wherever. Hope this was a useful introduction to GTD with TickTick. -Tick. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you want to learn more about using TickTick, -Tick, check out my course. And if you're interested in learning about other tools and how you can use those for GTD, I have a full playlist on my channel.